So, good evening. I'm sure that I will stick to the 10 minutes because I've been rehearsing this. My presentation, short presentation that I'm going to make is entitled, along with the researchers from my group, the maximum use of subproducts generated from livestock and farming. I don't know if you know, but we belong to the Institute of Natural Products and Agrobiology. It's the only center in the Canary Islands that belongs to the National Scientific Research Center. Agrobiology and environment is an important issue. We've heard time and time again that, that we need to move towards organic and sustainable farming, which is something that is becoming important in the primary sector. So the effectiveness of the agricultural systems towards the good health, soil health and the way they're handled is of vital importance to look after the environment and for the sub products and to use these subproducts arising from livestock and farming. I think we're perfectly clear about this. One of the systems that we use or we're developing as an in a research group is an agroecological system to reduce the issues of greenhouse gases. We have ecological farming suit which is called preparing liquid fertilizers, which consists basically of the organic fertilization where we use some uh, products such as flurries, agricultural products uh, from different crops, including banana waste from garden waste, um, forestry, manure from different origins, and we use the resources available on the farm. This system pre pre presents some fantastic advantages because it reduces our dependence on the outside. We don't have to import organic matter when we already have it here. It solves environmental problems pr because all these subproducts, especially from the livestock, go into landfills. It, it means that we have a more sustainable island by reducing the carbon footprint so we will be car, uh, CO2 sinks instead of emitters. And this makes the soils more fertile, which increases their cationic exchange, it reduces their salinity. And of course, as we've already heard, the microbiological side in soil treated with this model, and sometimes we forget about this part, because soil, as we have heard, is a living creature. Plants that we've studied under this model present a balanced development and the production is within the standards set for conventional crops. This model can be used both in organic farming but also in mixed farming. In the latter you'd reduce the contribution of synthetic fertilizing and thus contribute to the development of a sustainable farming model. Currently, as a research group, we're developing a project with the La Palma Island Council on uh, banana plantations. We provide support for a program that's been implemented by the Island Council of La Palma, which is called Sustainable Agriculture Program. The aim here is to provide integral advice for existing small holdings and for those who want to become organic farms. A basic pillar of this program is to promote and provide support for the use of subproducts from uh, farming and livestock activity on the island and also other sectors such as forestry or gardening, such that they undergoes a transformation process, i.e. composting, and this can be used as organ, uh, organic fertilizers for the, life, the small holdings on the island. Some of these you can see on the next graph, where you will see that the problems that exist with these subproducts, one of the tools could be to use this model that we call CEFEL, S-E-F-E-L. We can I'm showing you these figures because it's interesting. With this program that we're rolling out on the island of Lodgers, the flurries that are being reused, this is a subproduct that's used in this process. We're talking about 246,000 litres a month. The serum that are introduced 
in the preparation, we're talking about around 82,000 litres a month. So we're, we have approximately 58 small holdings that prepare these organic fertilizers and every month we're talking about 410,000 litres that's being produced. This is used in different crops, basically on growing bananas, but we're currently this is spreading to other crops, uh, avocado, there's some pineapple and also vines. One of the most recent projects that we started rolling out last year and this year, it, we're working with the University of Leon and what we did, we, re we conducted an in-depth study to characterize the TD compost produced this way, applying to uh, banana plantations on the island of La Palma. We currently have another research project from Sereti uh, funds with a company where we are studying how this fertilized fertilizer behaves in the soil that's been affected by salts with high clay content and fusarium problems and the behavior in the in the initial phase or the first growth stage of banana palms we've also worked on this project that we were in with the company Eco Arte Efestos Glass is the company. I'm sure you will have heard of it. They recycle the glass bottles. And what they've done is optimize a product called Eco um, Allotment. And we've helped help them to standardize and optimize this. And it's currently being marketed. This is a, a totally recycled product because the glass is recycled. We've optimized the different plants, the, the medicinal and ornamental plants. And then the system, the nutritive um, solution they have for developing these plants, uses fertilizers, these organic fertilizers. Some months ago, we started working in Andalusia on an agreement. And one of the companies that works with us is called Ecologicos Las Herrerías. And here, this entire organic farming model that we're describing is being implemented very quickly. They're using it in olives in the, over the last year. We can see in previous years with chemical fertilizer, you can see how the output and this farm has increased this olive production using this economic model. With regard to citrix, we also conducted a study about how Ecological fertilizers have helped the citrus trees, and we can see that in 2013, 2014, I'm not quite sure what happened, but if we compare it with 2012, 2013, you can see that the output is stable. And they've also recovered the crop this year from against the previous year. The same is true of cereals, where output in kilograms per hectares with farming of this kind have remained stable. They haven't lost anything. Other projects that we're currently working on in collaboration with the University of La Laguna, the School of Agricultural Engineers, is a work, an article that they're going to defend now, which we've entitled Study of the Soil Fertility and Nutrition of an Organic Farming of Papaya in the Early Stages of Growth. There are a lot of farmers on the island of Tenerife that are implementing this model, and they're doing it with papaya. We've seen a significant fall in salinity and um, soil in the soil. We've reduced the fruit, and we see the concentration of calcium, magnesium, and iron, and the protein content is very high. It's higher if we compare it with the standards that have been set for this variety of papaya. If we compare it with chemical fertilizer, we've seen a notable increase in the BRICS degrees, and we've also seen that it matures earlier. Another work that strikes me as being highly interesting due to the importance that plant, ornamental plants might have, such as proteas here on the island, La Palma is one of the islands that started out growing proteas very quickly and the results have been excellent. But here in Tenerife, we also have farms that grow proteas, and we've seen how these ornamental plants behave in the first year of their life using this organic model. 
the two cultivars that are used in the island, especially in La Palma, which is secession and tango, we've analyzed the height of the stems, we've analyzed the number of fluorescent um, shoots, which is so important for ornamental plants, and we found significant differences in favor of the SEFL treatment. This might be one of our major conclusions to see what happens in the coming years of these ornamental plants. We've also done this with lettuce, the Ramiolo and we've seen an increase in the growth parameters and the output of, in favor with SEF or a significant difference. We've seen the potassium content and the silica and iron content, which is higher in organic lettuce against the conventional ones. Sodium is constant. It's always lower in the ones that we've stud analyzed. We've also done this in nurseries with ornamental and aromatic plants where we've seen especially the development of the root system in models of this kind of using organic farming. We also have a, done an interesting work on how this organic farming model regenerates the soil because we see a drastic fall in conductivity, and so it regenerates. We've also talked about the microbiological side, which is also important, and all of this leads us to what Alex, Cecilia, and other speakers have said. The work that's been done emphasized the importance of developing participable and sustainable models involving the primary sector, experts, businessmen, the scientific community, and government. Thank you very much.